Hello everyone and welcome to the tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a top-down shooter in GDevelop in under 10 minutes. So let's immediately get started. Now, of course, the first thing we need to do is make a player. So first, we're going to add a new object right here. Then we're going to add a sprite object and we're going to simply rename this to be equal to the player. And I'm going to import an image. And this is just a simple 32 by 32 pixel cube. And I made a white line on it so that we can tell which way we're facing because we're going to be doing a top-down shooter that's controlled by the mouse. Now, if I hit apply, and then I'm going to drag this onto the scene, and then we'll have a player object right here. Now, we want to double-click into our player again, and let's double-click here, and then we want to go into our behaviors because we have to add the top-down movement. So let's go into behaviors and add a new behavior. And if we scroll down, we don't even have to scroll. We can see it right here. We have top-down movement four or eight directions. And please excuse that, but we have four or eight directions. Now we have the acceleration. We're going to set this as really high. It doesn't matter what this is, but acceleration means that it'll move to its max speed faster and deceleration will be, it'll move to its lowest speed, which is zero faster. So the higher that we set these, the snappier our player will be. And the lower that these values are, the more slippery and slidey they will be. We want to allow the di diagonals and we can also not rotate the object. I don't want to rotate the object because we'll be rotating it later to match the direction of the mouse. So you want to uncheck rotate rotate the object. And we have advanced properties here. We're not going to mess with this because this is mainly for isometric movement. So we're not going to mess with this. So here we have it allowed diagonals and we don't want to rotate the object. Now let's hit apply. Now if I preview the scene now. You'll see that if you use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can use up and you can move to the left, you can move to the right. And now we have these type of controls. So that's great that we have this. Now, since we're going to be shooting using our mouse, normally you wouldn't want to be using the arrow keys. We'll want to be using WASD. So let's make the control switch to WASD instead. So what you want to do is go into your untitled scene events. You want to add a new event. And let's, first of all, we're going to add, we have to think of this logically. We want to make it so when our up key or when our w key is pressed we want to simulate the up key so what do i mean by this let's go into our conditions let's go into other conditions and let's go into keyboard and key pressed and we're going to type in w as the key that we want to be pressed now the condition is if the w key is pressed then we want to simulate the up key on our top down controller so i'm going to add an action and then you want to click into your player that asset the top down movement controller and you'll see that we have all of these simulations of key presses so we want to simulate the up key press and hit OK. And now if I preview this, if you press W on your keyboard, now you should move up. Now, if you want to do this for the rest of them, WASD, all you have to do is right click this event, copy it, and you can either paste it by right clicking and pasting or put control V. And I'm going to do this three times and we're going to copy and paste it three times. We're going to click into this W, switch it to S, click into this other W and switch it to A, and then switch into the last one and switch it to D. And now instead of simulating us, not up, well, instead of simulating up, we're going to now simulate down for S. So let's double click into it. And now we want to simulate the down key press. And you can see where I'm going here. For A, that's left. So we're going to simulate the left key press for the player. So let's simulate the left key press. And for D, we want to simulate the right key press. So we're going to scroll up and then we're going to simulate the right key press. And here we have it. Now we're going to simulate all of these controls and now you can use WASD to move around the player. So now that we have the movement, there's only one last thing we need to do, which is the main part, which is the mouse control and the shooting for the player. Now we're going to need an extension for this. You actually don't need it, but it's more flexible to do it this way. We're going to go into our extensions tab in the project manager in the top left. Then we're going to go into extensions. We're going to click this plus. And now what you want to do is type in mouse pointer lock. And the reason why we're using this is because when we click into the game, our mouse pointer will lock inside of it and we won't be able to move our mouse outside the screen unless we press escape. And this is better than using the raw cursor because if we use the raw cursor, our mouse can move out of the game space and that can be very bad for the player. So now that we have that, now we want to make it so when we click into the screen, our mouse pointer will actually lock. So you can add a new condition by adding a new event down here. You can add a whole new event. In our condition that we want to check, we have to first check to see if our mouse pointer is not locked. So basically the condition is going to be like this in English, and then we're going to convert it to events. Here's in English. If the mouse pointer is not locked, and if our mouse key is pressed, our left key is pressed on our mouse, then we want to lock the mouse. 
the mouse cursor. So let's add this in terms of conditions. So let's go into other conditions and let's go into our mouse pointer lock. And we want to check if our pointer is not locked. So we're going to invert the condition because right here it says check if the mouse pointer is locked. So we want to invert it to check if it's not locked. Then we're going to add another condition. We're going to go into other conditions, events and control flow, and let's add an and. So if our mouse pointer is not locked and if we're going to go into our other conditions, go into mouse and touch, and then we're going to check if our mouse key left key is pressed. So you have the options right here. You want to check if the left key is pressed. And if all of this is true, then we want to lock the mouse cursor. And the way that we do this, we go into other actions, mouse pointer lock, and then we request a pointer lock. And this will basically lock the mouse cursor and then it'll hide it. So now that we have this, if I click into the game screen, you'll see that our mouse disappears. And the way that you make it appear again, you can press escape on your keyboard and your mouse cursor will pop back up and you can X out of the screen. Now, finally, we have to add the shooting mechanism. So for this, we're going to add another behavior to our player. So let's double click into our player, go into behaviors, add a new behavior, and let's call this, let's just type in bullet. And you'll see that GDevelop has a behavior called fire bullets. Now we're not going to go into all of these properties right here, but we can leave it the same. The only thing we're going to uncheck is rotate the bullets to match the trajectory. That's what we're going to uncheck right here. And let's hit apply. And now we also need to make a bullet object that's going to spawn. So let's add a new object. And I'm going to make this a sprite and we're going to name it bullet. And we're going to import an image. And this is going to, I'm going to use this as a bullet. You can use anything as the bullet. Now, one thing we want to do here is go into edit points and you'll see that we want to change our origin to the same position as our center. And the reason that we're doing this is because when our bullet spawns, it will create it from the origin point. So right now our origin is in the corner. So we don't want our bullet spawning in its corner. We want it spawning in the center. So let's change the origin X and Y position as both being equal to 16, the exact same at the center. So let's now hit apply and now let's make it so we can actually shoot. So let's add a new event and let's add a condition and we want to put other conditions and we want to go into if we're going to go into our mouse, if our mouse button is pressed, if left key is clicked, if this is happening, if our left mouse key, our left mouse button is pressed, then we want to add an action and then we want to spawn a bullet. We want to create a bullet. So we're going to go into our player and we want to fire a bullet. So I'm going to scroll down and I can't find it here. So we're going to just type in fire. Fire bullets towards an angle. Now we want to create it from this position. Player dot center x, player dot center x, and player dot center y. And you'll get used to this as you make top down shooters. But we're basically spawning it from the player center. And then we want for the bullet object, we want to set it as bullet. And for the angle of the bullet, we want to set it to player dot angle. Player dot angle. And the speed of the bullet, we're just going to set it to 500 pixels per second, which is decently fast. And another thing we want to do, let's let's preview it first and see how it looks. Just click it and you'll see that we'll spawn our bullet object. We'll spawn our bullet object. So this is cool. But we also want to make it so it's smaller when it first spawns. So the way we can do this, we can click into our bullet and then we can type in the size and we can change the size to being equal to let's say half of what it originally was, so 16 by 16. And now if we preview this again, we can now have a small bullet. Now, one last thing, we're going to do this really fast to get this in under 10 minutes. We have to make it so our player is always facing the direction of the mouse cursor. So let's do this really fast. Let's add a new event and let's keep it blank because we want this to always be happening. So let's go into our actions, click into our player, and then we type in the angle. We type in angle. And now we want to set our angle being equal to something. And we're going to use the mouse pointer lock, not the cursor, because our mouse pointer lock is different. So let's type in mouse pointer lock movement X. And instead of saying it equal to, we want to add because you can see here, we're not, we're adding the movement of our cursor on its X position, not setting it equal to that. So now by preview, we can look around and our bullets will automatically go in that direction because our angle is changing. And now that is how you make a top down shooter in just under 10 minutes just under 10 minutes. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any of our new tutorials on Q the Game Dev. Thank you for watching, and that's how you make a top-down shooter in under 10 minutes.